Welcome to Crime Tales TV, where reality hits harder than any blockbuster thriller. Picture this, a grand mansion cloaked in darkness, its secrets hidden behind polished walls. Suddenly, flames erupt, tearing through the tranquil night. But this isn't just a fire, it's a meticulously planned tragedy. Blocked by a sinister obstacle, firefighters arrive too late, discovering the Foster family's fate sealed in smoke and ash. Join us as we peel back the layers of deception in the gripping tale of the Foster family. In the pre-dawn hours of August 26, 2008, Shropshire Central Fire Control received a frantic call reporting a blaze at the opulent Osbaston Mansion, the Foster family's residence. Upon arrival, firefighters were obstructed by a large horse box deliberately placed to impede their entry. By the time they gained access, the Inferno had devoured everything, including the lives of the Foster family members. Subsequent investigations unveiled a chilling truth. The horse trailer wasn't a mere coincidence, but a calculated maneuver to thwart the firefighting efforts. A sinister undercurrent emerged, posing questions about who harbored such animosity toward this beloved family. The unsettling discovery of security footage revealed the sinister plot behind the tragedy. Christopher Foster, a man destined for success, had always been driven by ambition. Nurtured by his mother Enid, who saw in him a proactive achiever from an early age. His brother, Andrew Foster, shared similar aspirations, but struggled beneath Chris's imposing shadow, their relationship marred by childhood complexities. In 1987, Chris wed Jill, and their daughter Kirsty completed their family. Chris's journey to prosperity began modestly as a salesman peddling mattresses and pizza box insulation. However, a pivotal moment occurred when he witnessed the Piper Alpha oil rig disaster, igniting his entrepreneurial spirit. Seizing this opportunity, Chris founded an engineering company, developing Ulver Shield, a groundbreaking insulation material crucial for the oil industry. Despite initial skepticism, Chris's gamble paid off as Ulver Shield proved its mettle in rigorous testing, earning him millionaire status virtually overnight. His success, however, was overshadowed by familial tensions and undisclosed resentments, ultimately culminating in the tragic events that befell the Foster family on that fateful August morning. Reports circulated regarding Christopher Foster's accumulating wealth, painting a picture of a man seemingly drowning in riches as his business flourished. From a modest turnover of 50,000 pounds to a staggering 1 million pounds annually, Christopher's financial ascent was meteoric. His personal assistant noted a penchant for extravagant spending, suggesting that Chris was almost destined to splurge. While he limited himself to a £10,000 monthly salary, he frequently withdrew an additional £5,000 from the company's coffers for personal expenses. By 2004, his net worth reportedly stood at an impressive £10 million. In 2004, during a routine shopping outing, Chris and his wife, Jill, stumbled upon a feature in Shropshire Life magazine showcasing Osbaston House, a magnificent mansion nestled in the affluent village of Mabrook, Shropshire. Despite its 1.5 million pounds price tag and need for renovations, Jill was captivated. Without hesitation, Chris made an offer, swiftly selling their own home to relocate to the lavish Osbaston House. Investing 50,000 pounds into enhancements like a swimming pool and landscaping, Chris spared no expense in creating their dream residence. Settling into their new abode, the Fosters embraced a lavish lifestyle. Chris indulged in luxury vehicles, including two Porsches, an Aston Martin reminiscent of James Bond and multiple Range Rovers. Their daughter, Kirsty enjoyed the privileges of private schooling and horseback riding, courtesy of her father's generosity. Kirsty, described as kind and caring, spent her leisure time caring for their animals and participating in equestrian competitions. Chris spared no expense in maintaining their opulent lifestyle, hiring a housekeeper and personal assistant, and furnishing their home with over 200,000 pounds worth of antique decor. However, 
his extravagant pursuits extended beyond material possessions. Chris had a passion for shooting, evidenced by his collection of high-priced firearms and participation in shooting parties that incurred substantial bills. Despite his financial success, Chris's impulsive nature and penchant for instant gratification strained his relationships. Holding grudges against those who crossed him, he sought validation through material wealth and social status. His desire to distance himself from his humble origins in Wolverhampton drove his pursuit of a higher social standing, a goal shared by Jill. As time passed, the Foster's ascent into elite social circles was evident, yet underlying tensions hinted at a facade masking deeper issues. Chris's extravagant lifestyle and penchant for impulsivity served as a testament to his desire for validation and societal acceptance, a pursuit that ultimately led to tragic consequences for the Foster family. In her leisure time, Jill Foster immersed herself in indulgent activities, treating herself to nail and hair appointments and occasional beauty enhancements like manicures and Botox injections. Alongside her husband, Chris, and their loved ones, she reveled in extravagant family vacations, staying at luxury hotels and savoring the finest cuisine. These opulent getaways often incurred costs upwards of 20,000 pounds, a figure Chris didn't flinch at spending. However, unbeknownst to their social circle, Chris was pushing the boundaries of his financial limits. Compensating for his extravagant lifestyle, he began siphoning funds from the business, creating a stark financial imbalance with more money flowing out than coming in. In 2003, Chris signed an exclusive contract with DRC, granting them sole rights to produce the oil rig sealant he had invented. By 2004, his net worth had soared to one million pounds. Yet, by 2005, he found himself buried under 2.8 million pounds in debt. Rather than implementing prudent cost-cutting measures, Chris, consumed by his spending addiction, sought additional funds from alternative sources. Ignoring the exclusivity agreement with DRC, he signed a second contract with another company for the sale of his product, triggering legal action from DRC, who sued him and acquired his patent, turning it into a global success. Facing bankruptcy, Chris's company went into liquidation in 2007, with three million pounds worth of his assets frozen and his salary halted. Despite these dire circumstances, Chris persisted in maintaining appearances, continuing his extravagant lifestyle while concealing his financial troubles. He engaged in clay pigeon shooting and drove his luxurious cars, all while his debts mounted. It remains unclear to acquaintances whether Jill was fully aware of her husband's financial predicament or if Chris shielded her from the harsh reality. Meanwhile, Chris's disputes with his accountant, who reported him to the Inland Revenue for Tax Evasion, further exacerbated his financial woes. Resorting to borrowing from banks, remortgaging the Osbaston House multiple times, and overdrawing from numerous bank accounts, Chris struggled to keep up the facade of affluence amid mounting debts. Despite the mounting financial pressures, Jill Foster showed no signs of curtailing her spending habits, nor did she confide her concerns to her friends. Meanwhile, Chris found himself grappling with overwhelming challenges, acutely aware of the ticking clock and the looming specter of losing everything. During a conversation about their residence, Chris vehemently declared to a friend that he would never part with Osbaston House unless it was in a body bag, emphasizing his unwavering commitment to protecting his family at all costs. Struggling to maintain his facade of affluence while his finances dwindled, Chris sought professional help, confiding in his doctor about feelings of depression and thoughts of suicide. Despite starting antidepressant medication, his doctor seemingly dismissed his suicidal ideation. In the week preceding the August bank holiday weekend of 2008, Chris stumbled upon a letter from the BFFs indicating their intention to reclaim the house and assets. This letter served as a catalyst for the tragic events that followed, confronting Chris with the stark reality of his financial downfall. Faced with the prospect of losing their accustomed lifestyle, 
Kirsty confronted the possibility of parting with her beloved horses, while the family grappled with the notion of returning to Wolverhampton, relinquishing their luxurious existence. For Chris, a man of pride, such a scenario would be deeply humiliating. On August 21, 2008, a friend reached out to Chris via text, to which he cryptically responded, indicating that things were reaching a critical point. Unbeknownst to the friend, this communication hinted at the underlying financial turmoil Chris was facing. On August 25, 2008, the Foster family attended a barbecue and clay pigeon shooting event. Witnesses noted no signs of distress in Chris or his family members, who appeared cheerful and content. However, unbeknownst to those around him, Chris had spent the preceding week delving into suicide-related websites online. These events set the stage for the tragic conclusion that unfolded later that night, as Chris's desperate actions would forever alter the course of the Foster family's fate, leaving behind a legacy of unanswered questions and unimaginable sorrow. Following an afternoon spent reminiscing over old family photos, Chris Foster expressed his desire to leave a gathering, feeling overwhelmed. Although Jill preferred to linger a bit longer, they departed around 8.30 p.m., reaching home just minutes later at 8.44 p.m. Their final moments together as a family were captured by home security footage. Shortly after Jill retired to bed at 11.30 p.m., Chris went upstairs to check on Kirsty, urging her to also retire for the night. Around midnight, Chris made the decision to turn off the internet, prompting Kirsty to conclude her online conversation and retire for the night. At 3 a.m., Chris embarked on a sinister rampage. Armed with a silenced gun, he entered his wife's room and shot her in the back of the head as she slept. He then proceeded to Kirsty's room, where he inflicted a similar fate upon his daughter. Home security cameras captured his methodical movements as he proceeded to the dog kennels and the barn, systematically executing each animal with a gunshot to the head before setting the barn ablaze with all the animals inside. To impede firefighters' access to the residents and hinder their efforts to extinguish the fire, Chris strategically positioned a horse box in front of the main entrance and punctured its tires. He also rigged hose pipes connected to his domestic oil tank, pumping 200 liters of oil into the house's cellar. With his expertise in fire, Chris knew precisely how to ensure the complete destruction of the Osbaston house. Motivated by a vengeful desire, Chris seemed determined that if he couldn't retain his material possessions, then no one else should either. He ignited the house, dousing his cars and belongings with flammable liquid as well. As the flames rapidly engulfed everything, Chris re-entered the house with a rifle, eventually succumbing to smoke inhalation. The autopsy revealed no evidence of gunshot wounds, despite the rifle being close by. Around 4.11 a.m., the security cameras ceased functioning, prompting a concerned neighbor to contact emergency services upon witnessing the escalating flames. The tragic events of that night left behind a community in shock and mourning. Grappling with the incomprehensible actions of a man driven to the brink of despair, firefighters swiftly responded to the blaze at the Foster residence, only to be obstructed by the horse box at the main gate. After successfully removing the obstacle, they faced a daunting task as the fire had already reached an intense level. Battling the raging inferno, neighbors watched in horror as the estate was engulfed in flames, expressing deep concern for the missing Foster family. In the subsequent days, newspapers and TV stations launched appeals to locate the family, but their efforts proved futile. Authorities, initially suspecting a criminal abduction, initiated an investigation. However, with no bodies or security camera footage discovered, speculation ran rampant the arduous task of extinguishing the flames spanned three days. Finally, investigators cautiously entered the remnants of the house, where they made a grim discovery. The intertwined remains of Jill and Christopher were found bound together on a collapsed bed, 
in a room that had collapsed into the living room area. However, there was no trace of Kirsty. Hopeful speculation suggested she might have escaped, but others feared the possibility of abduction. Days later, heartbreak ensued as fragments of Kirsty's remains were discovered amidst the debris. With delicate precision, investigators gathered her remains into a waiting hearse. The discovery of a piece of Kirsty's skull revealed the tragic truth. She had suffered a gunshot wound to the head, mirroring her mother's fate. As the police recovered and scrutinized the bodies, suspicion turned toward Chris as the likely perpetrator of the crimes. Concurrently, an investigation into his financial affairs unfolded, revealing shocking revelations about the prosperous businessman's dire financial situation. To everyone's surprise, Chris's accumulated debts amounted to four million pounds. Creditors seeking to claim his assets were met with the realization that Chris had meticulously ensured there was nothing left for them. With the retrieval of security footage, police confirmed their suspicions. Chris had orchestrated the murders and his own demise, leaving behind no note or indication of his turmoil. The tragic events left the community reeling, grappling with the incomprehensible actions of a man driven to desperation by his mounting financial troubles. Speculations arose about the sinister reasons behind the shocking crime. One theory proposed that Chris, driven by shame over financial ruin, committed the act to avoid admitting his failures. Others suggested it was an act of defiance by a self-absorbed individual who destroyed everything before facing the possibility of loss. Enid was distraught by the news, as were others. However, she vehemently rejected the notion that Chris could be capable of such acts. She steadfastly defended him, believing he acted out of love for his family, protecting them from financial ruin. In contrast, Chris's brother Andrew held a different view. They had not spoken for 16 years, but there were fleeting thoughts of reconciliation for their mother's sake. However, Fear kept Andrew from approaching Chris's house, fearing a hostile reception. Andrew claimed that Chris had bullied him in their childhood and had even allegedly sexually assaulted him. This history led Andrew to remain silent for 16 years. He perceived Chris as a bully and control freak. In response to Andrew's 1999 letter seeking reconciliation, Chris demanded a written apology, stating that Andrew must beg and scrape on bended knee to see him. Andrew believed that Chris was unwilling to acknowledge his wrongdoings and held long-standing grudges. Four months after the tragedy, funerals for 15-year-old Kirsty and 49-year-old Jill were held at their local church. The joint funeral was attended by a small group of close friends and family. Both were laid to rest together as per Jill's family's wishes. Chris had a separate funeral and was buried away from Kirsty and Jill. In the years since the tragedy, remnants of the burned house and charred belongings remained, including Kirsty's cherished horse first aid book and a handwritten note outlining the family's planned meal. During the week following the tragic event, the haunting remnants of the once promising URW dream home persisted on the site, now reduced to crumbling ruins. This melancholic scene endured until 2011, when all the debris was finally cleared away. Subsequently, the 16-acre estate found new ownership in 2014, with plans formulated for the construction of a new six-bedroom house. Despite being listed for sale in 2012, the property languished on the market until 2014, when a price reduction seemingly spurred its eventual sale. While Christopher Foster's shocking deeds may have originated from financial struggles and the societal pressure to maintain an affluent facade, the tragic outcome underscores the dire consequences of his choices. Instead of making prudent financial decisions or seeking solace and support from loved ones, Chris chose a path of self-destruction, resulting in devastating consequences for all involved. As we contemplate this heart-wrenching case, our thoughts invariably turn to the victims whose lives were tragically cut short and the loved ones they left behind. Don't miss out on the latest episodes of Crime Tales TV.
Hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated. Join our community for more gripping tales of true crime. Subscribe to Crime Tales TV now, and remember to stay safe out there.